Here begins the lesson on the unit known as molarity and molality. We've had a great deal of practice using the concept of molarity, the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. Now we begin introducing a second way of determining the concentration of a solution known as molality. The molality unit, which uh, is not on the slide, but we'll be seeing it in a moment, little m, molality, we'll see that it is not temperature dependent, which makes it the ideal unit of concentration for calculating colligative properties. So the next part of our lesson begins talking about concentrations, comparing the unit of molarity with molality, knowing that that next unit, the molality, is indeed what we need to calculate colligative properties. That might be a brand new word for us, colligative properties those physical qualities that change a solution's behavior. In other words, from a pure solvent to a solution, there are certain physical characteristics that change just because I've added something into the water. Things like boiling points, freezing points, densities, vapor pressure, and even osmotic pressure just are some quick examples of colligative properties. So I begin with this looking at the slide on concentrations. We know that solutions have a variable composition. Solutions can be concentrated or dilute. The term dilute and concentrated we know to be qualitative terms. They are comparisons. If we indeed make a quantitative statement about the number of moles of solute in a given volume of solution, we start to talk about concentrations in molarity units. The terms concentrated and dilute are qualitative descriptions. We can get very specific with quantitative terms called molarity and molality. Concentrations, the amount of solute in a given amount of solution. The given amount of solution, keep in mind, this could be in a gram reading or it could actually be in a volume reading. So as we begin to take some notes here about the different ways we're going to talk about concentration, the term solution can either be in a volume and we get molarity or we can see it in a mass and we get the molality of our solution. We'll take those one at a time a little more carefully. So here's a slide that talks about the solution concentration of molarity. Molarity is a very familiar term, big M, number of moles of solute per liter of solution. I'm going to underline this word solution because it will indeed differentiate between the next new unit, molality. Molarity has been the most common unit of measuring a solution. It's not the only one, but it's the most common one a chemist will use. Moles of solute per liter of solution. We also could make a note that moles we know to be the grams of solute over the molar mass of our solute. Grams over formula weight is another way to say moles. So ultimately, we have been practicing solving problems looking at mole, uh, molarity in the last chapter, chapter 4. We understand that molarity of a solution for ionic compounds allows us to determine the dissolved ion concentration as well. And we practice these dissociation equations quite abundantly in Chapter 4, our aqueous reactions chapter. If we have a formula unit such as calcium chloride dissociating to calcium ion and two chloride ion, we could readily calculate the concentration of each ion. So in other words, just to make it easy, if this is a, a one molar calcium chloride solution, we'd also have one mole per liter of calcium ion, but we could readily see that we would have two moles per liter of the chloride ion, just keeping in mind that stoichiometric ratio, a one to one to two. Molarity and dissociation come out a little bit later as well when we talk about the Vant Hoft factor coming up in a little bit in colligative properties, just seeding a new word coming our way. How many particles are released in solution? It will be known as the Van Hoff factor. There's a T on that. Van Hoff factor. We'll write it later, just seeding it now. With molarity problems, we know that we can find molarity moles per liter, but I want us to pay attention to a brand new word, molality, molal units, little m. 
molarity, big M, moles of solute per liter of solution, little m, molality, moles of solute per kilogram of just the solvent. Notice up here, liters of the entire solution, and this is in a volume. Molarity is in liters of the entire solution's volume. In molality, we have a mass reading in a kilogram of just the pure solvent, not the mixture together, but the pure solvent alone. Moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. And we made a note here, this does not vary with temperature. The mass of a solvent does not change by warming it up or, or cooling it down as volumes may or may not, depending on what the state of matter is. But specifically for gases, we could certainly see how pressure and temperature affect volume. Let's take a quick peek at a model, an example of calculating molarity, just to make a distinction between molarity and molality. And part of our homework and or our um, quiz or so forth, you want to be a careful reader. Are we being asked to solve for molarity? which we know to be our familiar unit, moles per liter of solution, or are we being asked to solve for molality, which is moles of solute per kilogram of just the solvent. Now in this example, it's our familiar unit, molarity. Big M, moles per liter, so a straightforward calculation. Molarity is defined as moles per liter. Alrighty, so just kind of reminding ourselves, and that's of the whole solution, not just the solvent itself. We take 34 grams of our solute called ammonia and put it into 2 times 10 to the 3 mils or 2 liters of solution. So we'll begin by writing 34 grams of our NH3. We'll set up a mole map conversion where we use the molar mass to convert to a mole. One mole of ammonia would weigh 17.04 grams. The gram unit cancels and we have a mole. Moles per liter of solution. And notice that the volume is of the entire solution here. 2 times 10 to the 3 milliliters. Well, that times 10 to the 3 cancels the milli directly. And that's the same as saying 2 liters. 34 grams. I'm hitting this on my calculator, divided by 17.04, the molar mass, divided by 2, and we get 0.9976 huh. big M molar units of ammonia. So just a straightforward review of a molarity calculation. In our next slide, reading carefully, it has us calculate the molality of a solution. That's little m. And I like to make it just a little cursive, little m with a squiggle on it so you know that I'm writing a small m for molality, just to kind of make it a unique symbol for us to get familiar with. So I have a solution prepared by mixing 17.2 grams of ethylene glycol. This is an organic molecule, a hydrocarbon, given 0.5 kilograms of water to make 515 mils of solution. There's some extra words here, isn't there? The molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. That's what this is, isn't it? Kilograms of water is the solvent. This extra number, 515 mils of solution, if we needed to calculate molarity, we would need that, but not for molality. So let's begin. We'll write out our 17.2 grams of C2H6O2. We do a mole map conversion to convert it into moles. I'll need a molar mass of C2H6O2. Let me add that for us. I don't know it by heart. 12 times 2 plus 6 plus 32. And that looks like 62 grams for the formula weight. When I get moles of solute per kilogram of solvent, and I'll just set that under a 1 so we can see how we divide by kilogram, already provide us for us 0.5 kilograms of solvent. Step 1, we can see the unit gram canceled. 
and we have mole per kilogram, which is the very definition of molality. Hit with me just to be my calculator, buddy. I'll hit it and see if we get the same. 17.2 divided by 62 divided by 0.5. My screen says 0.55. That's good enough. 0.55 molal solution. Now, it didn't ask us, but what if, I can just back the slide up, I want to be sure. Let's suppose in this example it asked for big M, molarity, which is moles per liter of the whole solution. That's when we would use the whole volume of the entire solution. So we'd still have our 17.2 grams of our solute, ethylene glycol, and I would convert that to a mole by using its molar mass. But for big M, I need liters of solution, which would be the 515 millis converted. And if I divide out, and see how grams cancel, we have moles per liter. 17.2 divided by 62 divided by 0.515 liters gives us an answer 0.538, let's say 0.54 molar solution. This is molar, this is molal, as we kind of learn the distinction between them. Kilogram of solvent versus entire volume of the solution distinguishes between the two concentration units, molarity and molality. A second practice with molality. Suppose we dissolve 34 grams of ammonia into 2 times 10 to the third millis. And when I read that, I kind of go like this. That's 2 liters of water. We want to know the molality. Well, molality, just kind of getting what we need, is moles of solute per kilogram of just the solvent. But they gave me a volume here, didn't they? Well, actually, that might work fine because they gave me the density. So I'm going to get rid of this. We'll end up using that times 10 to the third. So let's consider the 2 times 10 to the third, which is 2 with three zeros after it. And that's the volume of water, or the whole solution, I should say, volume of solution. The density here can be used to convert your grams and mils. And with water, that's nice just because the density is equivalent to 1. We have 2,000 grams of water, which is what our solution is, which is the same as saying 2,000 mils. But we can also consider that as 2 kilograms. Alrighty, so with that density, we're very readily able to convert this volume unit into the mass unit that we need to come down here for the kilogram of solvent. And water is indeed the solvent here. So we have some mole map work to do, 34 grams of our ammonia. And I use the molar mass of ammonia provided for us right there in our problem, 17.04 grams per mil. We've canceled the grams, moles per kilogram of the solvent water will convert us into molal units and we get little m or molal solution for ammonia. 34 divided by 17.04 divided by 2 and at 0.99 Eight, pretty close to one actually. I'll just carry that out. 0.998 molal solution. Now this problem showed us how to use density to convert from a volume unit to a mass unit. With this example it was nice because the density was one so the same number of mils ended up to be the same number of grams but that's not always the case. The numbers sometimes will change. As in this example we're given a molarity of 16.2 sulfuric acid. Calculate the molality from that solution. Let's make a comparison. Big M molarity moles of solute per liter of the entire solution. Remember the solution has two components, the solute 
and the solvent. When we consider little m molality, it's moles of solute per kilogram of just the solvent. So there is a distinguishing characteristic, and again, I know I've given the density to help make sense of this. Here's what we know from looking at this number, 16.2. That tells me 16.2 moles of sulfuric acid are contained in every liter of solution. That's the definition of big M, molarity units. Given the density of our solution, we can work to change the liter unit into a mass unit of the solution. All right, so let's, let's consider that. We'll change colors just to help denote what we're working on as something new. And I like it to be thin, so here we go. When I consider the liter of solution, and notice here we're given milliliters, so I think what I'll do is say we have a thousand milliliters of solution. I want the milliliters to cancel and I want to convert to a gram. All right. Now looking at here, 1.8 grams in every milliliter. Using that density, I can convert the milliliters into a gram unit. So a thousand milliliters times 1.8 grams is 1800 grams. And here's the kicker. That's of the entire solution. But remember what we need here is the solvent. Just the solvent. The solution is made of two parts. The solute and the solvent. Alrighty. Well, how many grams of solution, or how many grams of this acid are contained in 16.2 moles? We have to subtract that out from the 1800 grams total. We have some mole map to work to do. The 16.2 moles of the aqueous acid, H2SO4, and that's why they provided us with the molar mass here, there's 98.08 grams of acid in every one mole. Mole times molar mass. And what I found is 15, 88 point, I'll say point 0.9, 1,588.9 grams of acid. It's a very concentrated solution. This is a quite large number for concentration. So if this is the combined mass of the solution, and 1588.9 of those are the solute, what must the mass of just the solvent be, knowing that the combined total is 1800? That solvent is the water. 1800 grams of solution minus the determined mass of the acid leaves me 211.1 gram of just the solvent. The H2SO4, plus the water gives me the entire mass of the solution. So back up here, when we wanted to consider molality, little m, we had some work to do to get out from the liter unit just the mass of the water. So what we're left to do, and let me just change to perhaps red, the last step here, and I like the line to be thin. Little m, molality, moles of solute per kilogram of the solvent. 211.1 grams is 0 0.2111 kilograms of just the water. 16.2 divided by 0.2111 and we have a 76 point seven four molal solution. Very different numbers. 16.2 molar 
is 76.7 molal. Moles per liter is our molarity. Molarity puts volume of the entire solution on the bottom. The solution is made up of two parts, the solute and the solvent. So we determine the mass of the solute by doing some mole map work. This mole map work here determined the mass of the solute. We had to take the entire solution and subtract out the solute's contribution to find the remaining mass of just the solvent. And that became the kilogram in which we divided out. Good problem, converting between molarity units and molality units, looking at volume.